Hi, welcome to the Quick Resume CFD Toolbox for MATLAB tutorial number 14. In this tutorial we will simulate the heat convection from the flat plate that is being heated and the heat is taken to the ambient atmosphere. Just to give you an idea how it looks. The inflow is from the left hand side, number 8, and the plate, heating plate, is located at 12. So there is some open space at 11, there is a far field at 10, and the outlet from the computational domain is at 9. We'll come back to that later on. First of all, let's deal with the mesh. That's going to be a flow over flat plate, therefore we will need boundary layer to get the grid much finer in the region of most interest. I refer to tutorial number 5. For more details, you set the number of elements in the boundary layer, height of the first element and the growth ratio, and we generate the boundary layer on the bottom in slip zone and the wall zone. Then we extrude those layers, convert mesh to the second order and visualize everything. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's how it looks. We can just magnify it and yeah, that's a nice growing boundary layer in here. This problem is actually being solved in two distinct steps. First of all, we just perform the pure fluid flow simulation, therefore we only define the fluid and initialize the solution in here. And only after that, we'll be able to perform simple advection diffusion problem for the heat transfer. Mathematically speaking is first we solve Navier-Stokes equation for fluid and only after that we solve the heat transfer equation with the convection term U which is already found by Navier-Stokes solver. Okay, so let's have a look at the CFD part. We define viscosity of the fluid, we initialize the solution, set convergence to a pretty low value. Uh, Please refer to tutorial number 15 for more details. Define the constant inlet velocity and we start iterating nonlinear terms. Assemble Navier Stokes matrix, no stabilization is needed. And now let's focus on the boundary conditions a little bit. Okay, so 8 is inlet, 12 is wall here. So the wall begins in here. 9 needs no description, by default it's pressure outlet, and 10, 11 are both slip walls, so basically velocity doesn't go through that, it just goes along that, but it can slip. Compute and plot residuals, break if the solution is converged, solve every time step, and visualize the horizontal velocity. Okay, so let's give it a try. The convergence starts here. You can see only after the first step it's pretty low. And yeah, that's what we get. That's the horizontal velocity. So you can clearly see how the boundary layer develops because the flow is slower in here and it gets thicker. Let's just zoom it. The trailing edge, ah, sorry, leading edge. And yeah, you can see the laminar boundary layer being developed nicely. On top of that, we will solve the heat transfer problem. So we need to define extra parameters. That's the thermal conductivity of air, density of air, heat capacity of air. That's the thermal diffusivity of air, which is conductivity normalized by density and heat capacity. We also define the Prandtl number here. And we start with assembling the problem for calculations. Heat transfer problems are exactly the same as diffusion problems. So we use assemble diffusion matrix 2D. We also add the scalar conve convection matrix that results from the fact that there is some non-zero U that is left hand side of the equation that I showed you. Assemble all together. We apply the boundary conditions. That is simply the inlet air has temperature zero and the 
wall has temperature 1, so 8 inlet in wall 12, 1. And now we solve the problem. The problem is linear, therefore we just solve it in one step. And we can visualize the temperature field. Okay, let's proceed. Yeah, nice. First look, it might look like velocity, but in fact it's temperature. So you can see how heat is taken from the heating plate towards the flow and how the thermal boundary layer develops. Now we'll do some post-processing on those results. What we'll want to do is to compare the Nusselt number, that means the non-dimensionalized heat transfer coefficient on this surface, we'll compare it to some known analytical solution. Just to give you an idea, that's the reference solution formula. In order to find the Nusselt number, we'll have to divide the heat transfer coefficient by lambda. And heat transfer coefficient is found from calculating the heat transfer. For heat transfer, we'll need to find the gradient of temperature. And this itself is found by the function solution gradient to d, which simply evaluates the gradient of temperature vector. We also need to divide everything by the temperature difference to get the proper scaling. Okay, furthermore, once we have the new from our simulation and new reference from the formula, we'll just plot it in the figure and see how one compares to another. We just create two scatter plots on a subfigure, add some legend, keep it turned on, get the grid title and coordinates. Okay, so let's go. Okay, yeah, there we go. So that's how it looks along the plate. That's what formula tells us, the blue one, and our solution is the red one. And that's the value of Nusselt number. So we can see that those values compare pretty nicely in the first region and now then downstream there starts to be some discrepancy growing but it's at the order of like 10-15%. You could experiment with finer mesh to check out if it really makes sense, does it converge and so on. For now that's all on this tutorial. You can do lots of more preprocessing things when you check out, for example, tutorial number 15 or other tutorials on heat transfer. For now, we hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe or leave us a comment and see you next time.